Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It has been quite a while since I've done any type of an update or any type of a video for that matter. What we're gonna do today is go over what did my theater cost to build? Now this video is gonna go over all the individual components and products that I put into this build. And keep in mind that this build happened throughout the year of 2021, as I was finishing the entire basement at the same time that I built this space. So some costs overlapped a little bit. I'm not gonna get into you know, costs for drywall and carpet because we were doing that anyway as we finished the basement. And this is just an open space for those of you that are familiar with my channel. As you can see, this is not a dedicated room. So we're not gonna get into all the costs involved. We're gonna concentrate on the products that I had to purchase, like these theater chairs that you see over here, the projector, the screen, all the AV equipment. That's the kind of cost that we're gonna focus on, keeping in mind that this, again, was all put together in the year of 2021. In my mind, I was very careful when I bought stuff and tried to be on the budget-friendly side of things. I looked for the best deals. I waited for sales to happen before I purchased certain equipment. The other thing that you have to keep in mind, too, is this was still fairly at the peak of COVID, which happened, you know, early 2020, there was still production supply issues and manufacturing issues. There was price issues, inflation, all kinds of things to take into consideration. So again, this video is 2021 prices and I'll go through, I kept a spreadsheet of all the equipment, anything that I purchased to keep track of the entire cost of my entire build. And I wanna reiterate something here. This is not a bragging video by any means. I built this theater on a budget. It is not a $100,000 top of the line, best you can purchase of everything. If you've seen my other videos, there's a ton of DIY that went into this theater build. This is what I have. This is what works for me and my family. I would absolutely love to have a dedicated room. Maybe someday in the future, I'll be able to build one of those, but right now, this is what we have. This is a multi-purpose space and it works for us and our family and we thoroughly enjoy watching movies down here and we have a lot of fun doing so. So let's start a quick tour and I'll start showing the costs of the equipment that I used for this build and we'll start tallying it up and see what we come up with at the end. Let's get right to it. We're gonna start out with all the various speakers that make up the 5.6.4 system. That's five main bed layer speakers, six total subwoofers, and four overhead Atmos speakers. For the bed layer, we have the Home Theater Direct Versa HTS-1 in-wall speakers. I'm not going to get into any of the specs in this video, but please check out my other videos if you wanna learn more about the specifications and why I chose them for my build. These speakers were $349 each. There are five total for the bed layer for a total of $1,745. The four Atmos speakers are also from Home Theater Direct and are model HDX R65 AIM. Along with the four Atmos speakers, I also purchased four pre-drywall brackets to make it easier to locate and install the speakers before the drywall was even put up. The speakers were sold in pairs, with each pair being $161.10, and each bracket was $10, for a total Atmos speaker setup cost of $362.20. The rear wall subwoofers are currently SVS PB1000 Pros. I initially purchased two PB1000 subwoofers for $865. Then a few weeks later, the Pro models were released, which included the smart app capabilities. I was able to sell the PB1000 subs locally and recoup all of my money. And then I purchased two of the Pro model, which only cost an additional $300. So the total cost for these two subwoofers is right at $1,165. 
Behind the acoustically transparent screen are four 18-inch Stereo Integrity HT18 V3 subwoofers that are configured in an infinite baffle setup. I purchased these subwoofers right when the model V3 was released from Stereo Integrity, and they were $189.99 each, times four for a total price with tax of $815. The bass shakers are the Aura Sound AST-2B Pro. There are six total shakers, one for each seat. I purchased these from Parts Express. I have a link in the description below. And they were about $44 each for a total with tax of $262. I also had some miscellaneous expenses for this project, like some 14 gauge speaker wire to run to the connection block on the rear wall, the connection block itself, some banana plugs, etc., which totaled roughly $98 for a total base shaker package price of $360. Also on the back wall are the two surge protected outlets made by Panamax. I purchased these on Amazon from the link in the description below for a total of $86. These at least provide some level of protection to the two SVS PB1000 Pro subwoofers that are plugged into them. There's a third generation Amazon Echo Dot I purchased for $20 on top of one of the rear subwoofers that are close to my main listening position. This Echo Dot is primarily used to control automation in my theater area like lighting, LEDs, and also to provide music for the entire space when the kids are playing in the basement. These are the Octane Cloud XS850 theater seats in Italian Luxe leather. I have three love seat configurations for a total of six seats. They are manual recline with no power options. The love seat configurations allowed for everyone to have their own cup holders. I purchased these seats from the theater seat store online for a total cost with tax of $3,043. I had a great experience with the theater seat store and they even allowed me to purchase these seats when they were running a large sale by putting 50% down payment and then they held them for me for a few weeks until I was ready to have them delivered. The customer service experience I had was fantastic and I highly recommend them to everyone. My projector of choice is the tried and true Epson 5050 UB. I purchased this directly from Epson as a refurbished unit for a total cost with tax of $2,215. The refurbished unit still came with a warranty directly from Epson, so I figured I could save some money going this route. Where I really lucked out was when this refurbished unit had a spot on the lens and I did a warranty claim on it, they didn't have any more refurbished units at the time, so they had to send me a brand new one. I really lucked out with this, and I'm sure this isn't a typical thing that happens very often. Otherwise, I've been very pleased with this projector's performance in my theater. This is my DIY 140-inch 16x9 acoustically transparent projector screen. I bought the materials for the frame and piano hinges for the French cleat from Menards for $230. The acoustically transparent screen material and black velvet border tape came from Carl's Place for a total of $275. The Govi LEDs were $32, the gas shocks were $19, and the push latches were $10, all from Amazon in the links below. The total screen build cost was The cavity behind the screen was initially built to hold the two SVS PV1000 Pro subwoofers. As you know, my subwoofer plans changed and they are now along the rear wall. The total cost of this cavity was $560. This figure includes a jigsaw for $64 to cut the holes for the 18-inch subwoofers, the Govi LED lights for $35, 
three SVS subwoofer RCA cables for $55, which I'm not even using anymore since the PB1000s were moved to the rear wall, a hot glue gun for $20 to attach the $125 in foam tiles, which are mostly for aesthetic reasons and don't really contribute to sound quality purposes. The cavity just looks much nicer with them installed. And the cavity does currently house the four 18 inch stereo integrity subwoofers in the infinite baffle setup and the Govi LEDs light them up so that you can see the subwoofers through the acoustically transparent screen when it's dark enough in the room. These are the soffits that I built during the initial framing of the room. The total material cost for building these was $212, plus the Govi LEDs for $60 for a total cost of $272. Since the room is open, these soffits allowed for a nice break to frame out the theater area and separate the darker paint colors of the theater space. I also incorporated a built-in channel along the inside edge for the LEDs to hide in. The projector box was built in as part of the soffits as well. The HVAC ended up running through them, and so did a PVC pipe that allows for future wiring from the media rack area to the projector box, all hidden inside of the soffits. I really like how they turned out, and I get compliments on them all the time from people that come to visit. This is the PVC pipe that runs through the soffits to the projector box. It is a two inch diameter and makes a 90 degree turn to get to the projector box. The total cost was around $25 for the pipe and 90 degree elbow. As you can see, I've already taken advantage of this pipe by running two 50 foot sections of subwoofer RCA cables from my media rack location to the two rear SVS subwoofers. These monoprice 50 foot RCA cables were about $55 from Amazon. I installed them because the wireless adapters I tried out were having some interference issues and I wasn't happy with their overall performance. Above the media rack is an inch and a half Smurf tube that runs to the top of the projector box. This tube was $15 and is dedicated to the 30 foot RuPro HDMI cable that cost $92. This was part of my future proofing plans as well and will make it easy to replace or upgrade the HDMI cable if and when it is ever needed. Below the Smurf tube is where all 12 channels of speaker wire comes into the media rack area and plugs into the Denon AVR. This is hard to put an accurate cost on because I still had a bunch of monoprice 14 gauge speaker wire left over from my whole home audio install that I used for these channels. The 1,000 foot roll of speaker wire was initially $330 from mono price, and I maybe used a third of it, so maybe $100 roughly. I also ended up buying an additional 14 gauge wire, which was $60, so let's just call it $150 in speaker wire, $30 for Sewell banana plugs, $23 for the wire loom cable sleeve, and $7 for the Velcro ties I use for cable management purposes for a grand total of $210. This is the dedicated 20 amp circuit I have all my home theater equipment on. As you can see, I have four initial outlets and two switches. The switches control the two outlets that are inside of the subwoofer cavity behind the screen. The idea was that I could turn off the subwoofers remotely if I wanted to without opening up the screen or having to physically gain access to the subwoofers. These outlets are no longer powering any subwoofers in my system and are now used for the Govi LED lights for the screen and for the cavity itself. The white extension cable you see is plugged into the Panamax surge protector on one end and the remote outlet kit on the other, which then has Romex cable that runs to the top of the projector box to two additional outlets, which supply power to the Epson projector and the Govi LED track lights. This way, the Epson is on a power conditioner or surge protector, even though it isn't close to my media rack. The total cost here was $128 for the 12 gauge wire, the remote outlet kit, and those dual on and off switches. This is the Echo Gear 20U rack that I used to hold all of my equipment. It was $215 total and is an open four post rack that I built on a stand just to get it higher off the ground for easier access to all the equipment. 
The Panamax power conditioner was $262. The AC Infinity cooling fan was $119. The Denon AVR was $1,549. The Panasonic 4K player I purchased used for The Mini DSP and U-Mic 1 was a package deal for $326. The Behringer Amp was $260. The Onkyo 5.1 receiver was used for $50. The NVIDIA Shield Pro was $210. And to control it all is the Harmony Elite Remote System, which I purchased used for $175. I have two lacing bars purchased for $35. These install at the rear of the rack and help with cable management and also help take some of the cable strain off of the connections on the back of your equipment. I highly recommend them if your rack supports the use of them. I recently added this blackout curtain and tension rod for $30, simply to hide all of my equipment when it is not in use. This was a very simple but effective way to keep everything out of sight and out of mind. That wraps up this video. At this time, I have roughly $15,215 invested into my home theater build. Keep in mind this price didn't include any type of drywall or carpeting because we were finishing the entire basement and at the same time building this theater. I still have a few more projects that I'm slowly getting to and I will be doing videos on my process for those as well, so stay tuned. Here is a little hint of what will hopefully be coming soon. So please like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Thanks again as always for watching and we'll see you in the next one.